just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. And if I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. Get a gun. Hello and welcome to episode 266 of Slamfire Radio for August 2nd, 2018. I am one of your hosts, Trevor the Falate. I'm another one of your hosts, Matthew the McClatchy. And Warning I'm Shot. Your nickname is Warning Shot. Oh yeah, it's been a while. I forgot. Yeah, Who was that Warning third shot. guy that came on? Adriel the Frosty. Adriel, uh, Adriel, the, Frosty. Frosty. Adriel yeah. the Frosty. That yeah. works. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Well, it's been a while, gentlemen. Um, Matthew and I, last time we were both on was... Did we do a show at West? Yes. No, we tried. Wait, no. We tried. Failed. We failed. failed. We were gonna. Adriel broke his mic, let the listeners down. Mm, Adriel's fault. Didn't yeah. like him to start with. Yeah. No, there you go. There you go. Well, perfect. Works out then. If it weren't for, yep. if it weren't for yep. those listeners, this would be a great show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So last time... The three of us were on together, and Kelly was back at my house for the charity shoot. Which like a we year were... ago? No, no, like July oh. 9th. Oh, you mean like this charity shoot? Yeah, the one that just went right. by, the uh, eighth annual Podcart charity shoot. The Podcart, yes. Yeah. It was <laughs> a great show. Yeah. So, Well, uh, Matthew, speaking of the charity shoot, um, why don't you tell us what you've been up to since the Podcart charity shoot? I... Whoa, 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 whoa. Who's, who sponsors the intro to what we did? Yeah, again? Oh, my goodness. It's been a while I, since you've been away. Yep. I am, I am, I am um, just, I don't know. I'm just bad, man. Um, what we did this week in guns is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. They have a whole bunch of new stuff in stock, but specifically, they got some Swiss K11s and they are selling them at 549 uh, all kinds of new stuff came in. Jeff Jeff was telling me about, and I uh, wouldn't mind having me one of these Swiss K11s now that I'm doing the whole Milserp thing. But yeah, so don't be a communist. Buy a Swiss rifle. They will go like they will go up. Uh, K K11s or K31s yeah. will uh, will be worth more than five hundred. Like it, what do they go for in the U.S. right now? Eight hundred? Something silly. More, more, because they're just not making that many. Um, they didn't make it that many to start with, and uh, there's not that many out there that aren't molested somehow. Well, that's yeah. that one with that ring thing on the back. Yeah, yep. is pull. it bolt straight action? Pull. Straight, straight pull bolt oh. action. Straight pull bolt. Interesting. Yeah, they're really cool. They're really accurate. The ammo that was made for them, like the Millsurp ammo, is considered match grade ammo. It's oh, like, yeah. What oh, caliber are they? Eleven. It's seven. Seven point five by fifty five. That's it. Okay, cool. It's seven six two. It's thirty cal, but right. uh, yeah, 55. it's the like Trevor mentioned the Millsorp stuff that you can buy for it is excellent. Oh, when wholesale was going out of business, they were selling that stuff for like super duper cheap. Oh no, really? I didn't buy any. I should have. I didn't need so, it. That's sweet. So. Yeah, it's got some stank on it too. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. It's got some. It's got some snap. Cool. Sounds yeah. fun. So what have you been up to, dude? I don't know. Well, you were here for the charity shoot. What did I do then? Well, you charity shot shoot. some stuff. You won some yeah. things. Um, since the charity shoot, like, well, you, well, why don't you talk about the charity shoot? And... Oh, we could do that. Uh, so yeah. I won the silhouette. I don't think very many well, people were surprised. Yeah, yeah. So we shot silhouette and we shot some trap. I didn't do her very well in trap. And uh, then yes, yeah, because so, you're a capable so, trap shooter. And oh, I used to was. I'm not anymore. It's been so long since I've shot trap that I can't remember what to even do. And I was using your gun, which I haven't really even shot before. But the charity shoot itself was a lot of fun. We had a lot of people come out. Um, we uh, had a good time meeting old friends and making new friends. And yeah, it was, it was a good time. Uh, did you want like more details on the charity shoot itself, or are we going to talk whatever about you? Later? Well, I'm going to give. I'm going to give a. A synopsis on my oh, end okay. as Matt's director, but you go ahead and say whatever you like, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. All okay. I have to say about that. <laughs> no, it was a fun time. I, I enjoyed myself like I always do. <laughs> but, you know, aside from the car not working properly and having to you know get people to you know boost my car and then buy a new battery and 
Thanks to ah, oh, that was minor. Yeah, psh, thanks thanks lots of many hands. Thanks to David, more. David to the rescue, didn't David? David yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah David scooped me up, and then I, uh, of course, uh, gave him the the Matthews Award, Matthews Choice Award for yes for helping me out with my truck. <laughs> so that was cool. Yeah, fine service in the mechanical areas. Mm, yep, mm, yep. So yeah, that was the charity shoot. I guess good times had by right. Out. Then what? What what happened after the charity shoot? Yeah. Oh, I don't you know. Went, like you went like, to Alberta. Oh, we went to Alberta. I guess so there was that. Uh, we put on the Falachi course two days. Uh, again, we're back at Rafter Five, Rafter Five B, Rafter Five, Rafter yeah. Five B. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Brad's, Brad. Brad's range there, amazing range. Love that range, uh, except for the hill. Trevor got to experience another hill while we were Her there. Sound booth wasn't that good either. The acoustics in the sound booth were just. Yeah, the sound booth was. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> 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 oh yeah the trailer <laughs> that was great yeah no that wasn't fun well it was well anyway so yeah that's it was a it was a really fun um uh, again all new faces and old faces um which was awesome it's always it's always a good time out in alberta i did not get to shoot any gophers though I unfortunately did. some you shut up and uh uh yeah no maybe next year we can, you know, we got to get on Frosty now to kind of yes. line up some fields for us, maybe to kind of figure that out. Well, my region will change because we're changing where we're not going to shoot east. We're going to shoot center Alberta. Center okay. north. All right. So, what does that mean? Does that mean more gophers or less gophers? Mm, well, gophers. Gophers. Okay. Yeah, there gophers. will be gophers, though? Probably. Probably. Well,. Probably. We should have a contest. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait. Why are you coming up with a contest? That doesn't make any sense. You're not competitive at all. No, listen. This is okay. for the listeners. Listen. We should come up with a contest oh, okay. and invite one lucky listener to come go for hunting with us. All right. Let's do it. What should the contest be? Um, Who can write an email logo? that even Trevor can read? Where's our new logo? Oh. We asked for a new logo. Did and uh, we, only, we only have one one uh submission so they got a week, they got a month left no they got like 27 days or 28 days yeah that's that's pretty close we could probably round that up <laughs> 30 we could call that okay. a month <laughs> so we already have a we already have a prize for that contest so we'll, yeah. we'll we'll work out the details but i think that's a great idea what do you think uh adriel i concur all right oh, we're, I gonna concur take, we're gonna take one lucky listener go for shooting with us i like it let's do that all right it has to be yolanda well, there you go. We have we have a winner. We have a winner, folks. Here we are. <laughs> Does she supply the gopher field? Because that's easy then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Yolanda, we're coming over for barbecue, beer, and gopher shooting. Mm. I believe there's gophers in that area. Oh there's yeah, got to be. Yeah. So gophers. Yeah. So yeah. So didn't shoot any gophers. All that to say, I did not shoot any gophers. But we did shoot a class, and the class was a fun class. And um, is that all I did? Then then this. Then this. Now where are you? What are you doing? Now I'm at Trevor's. I think um, you're tired. I feel like you're tired. How could you tell? Because you can't put a sentence together. No, been a while. So since a lot of sleep, I had a kid. Everybody knows that, though, right? So yeah, that's old news. So that, I'm just trying to explain why I haven't had much sleep. Sold Roger. your house. Now you need to buy so, a new one. Sold the house. Yeah, in the process of buying a new one. So lots of stress levels there. It's awesome. Um. Yeah, Matt Trevor. So I'm in I'm in Campbellton. We shot the pre-match yesterday and today, and I was here the day before as well, and the day before that, I guess. Monday. You arrived Monday. I don't know what day it is. So it is Thursday. Thursday. So we, you know, set up all the targets, set up the range, and a bunch of paperwork. Uh, you know, which, we're not so, done. which yeah. So. Yeah, we're we're basically in the middle now of SummerSlam. We're putting on a level three Ipsic match, and we're just getting ready to tomorrow. We go out and retarget to to put fresh targets up. We're using wax targets this year. You talked about this yet, Trev? Nope. So the Ipsic targets are made out of cardboard, and when it rains, it sucks. So you got to put like these dry cleaner bags on them so that the targets don't get all soggy and the patches don't fall off and stuff. And it's harder to see the targets. You got to shoot through the bags. You get soaked. It's terrible. Who was it that came up with the wax target thing? Uh, well, we're getting them in Canada from Freedom Ventures, but I think they started in Europe. But I'm not 100 percent on that. All right. So we're yeah. So the targets are just coated in a wax front and back. 
and you can leave them out in the rain. Now, this it's cardboard, and so the center isn't coated, of course, because it's in the center. So they will still deteriorate over time. But for the most part, it can rain. You don't need to bag the targets. And the patch is still, ouch, you cat just bit me. And, the, <laughs> and you can, uh, you, this patch is still t- sticks to the targets when you're out. So no more bags while we're shooting, which is going to be amazing. We actually had rain on the range today while we were shooting and shot targets in the rain with no bags. And it, they work great. They're amazing. I love them. It's fantastic. We should do it all the time. And we will at major matches. Yeah. Oh, you guys just reminded me. So I'm just uh, texting the one of the other guys in my club here. We got to get some of those targets. They're great. Yeah. Yep. Not every time, but like when it's like, mm, might rain today. Just stick, yep, them, stick up. them out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, they're twice as much, but I mean, that's worth it. Definitely. Worth Cardboard it. targets are not a major expense. They you really aren't. Twice no. the cost, you know, we're, we're still going to be fine. That's right. Yep. So yeah, so shot SummerSlam had a fun time. the The match, the pre match, was pretty good. All the guys on the squad, except for Trevor, were amazing. Uh, had a, they were all sort of on their game and showed up when they were supposed to. Never held us back. Always patching and helping out. Um, and yeah, it was it was great. Good time shooting with all of them, except Trevor. So it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't given him a hard time ever since I got here. It just doesn't quit. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not wrong in some of the things that you just said. <laughs> so, all right, that it for you? I guess so, whatever. Move on. Who's next, you? Uh, uh, yep. All right. Okay, so um, my take on the podcast charity shoot, this was the eighth Pod annual. Cart. Um, Podcart. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah, I want to show that to everybody. So, um, any, any of you who are listening tomorrow... He's holding up a plaque that says the 8th Annual Canadian Podcart 2018 Network Charity Shoot. Yeah. They put an R instead of an S. Man alive. I don't know. So anyway, um, luckily it's not on me. I pulled out the screenshot of the Facebook message to the trophy lady showing exactly what should appear on the on the plaque. And it says podcast, not podcart. So, but anyway, it was... Uh, in my opinion, of course, because I was the one organizing this uh, boots on the ground here, um, I'm really almost mortified and embarrassed by it. And think it's I think it's hilarious. It's a great talking point. Well, anyway. Um, so <laughs> more importantly than a spelling mistake on a plaque uh, is the fact that the listeners, the people who came to the event, CCFR members all came together to raise a whopping seven thousand dollars by the time the event started we had three thousand dollars raised before we opened up the gate at the range we made six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars at the range and then later on that night we raised another two no it wasn't six thousand seven hundred it was six thousand five hundred something the picture of the check is online somewhere anyway i think we're around the the six thousand five hundred dollar mark and that night Gallon decided since he Gallon was supposed to attend the Ferlacci class. So for those that are just getting caught up here, we did a Ferlacci class on Thursday, donated all the money to charity. There was a maple seed on Friday and they donated a portion of the profits to charity. And then um, the charity shoot on Saturday, Gallon was supposed to attend our Ferlacci class and he bailed at the last minute, costing us a hundred dollars or costing the charity a hundred dollars because we were only charging a hundred dollars for this event because it was in our backyard and we had no expenses. So gallon to make up for it said, I tell you what we'll do. I've got a can of bear spray. We'll raffle it off. We'll do something. And, and the winner will uh, spray me in the face. So for the prize table at the charity event, you paid $20. You got 10 tickets and you put the 50, 50 ticket in the container in front of the prize you wanted to win. And um, so we did the same thing for gallon at the party at my house post charity shoot party. Um, we raised an additional 250 bucks and Al Ontario, one of uh, Russia Gush's uh, members won and pepper sprayed him in the face. It was amazing. We Facebooked it live. It he was did not awesome. hold back. He, he like, he no. sprayed until there was no more spray in that thing yeah. right at the face. <laughs> yep. he and, yeah. And gallon took it like a man. Oh, mm-hmm. did he ever? Yep. Oh, and Matthew ended up getting some uh, accidentally. Matt, so Gallon was wearing a, a garbage bag, 
And uh, Matthew led Gallon up the stairs and into the bathroom so he could shower. And he had his hands on the garbage bag. And then later he took off his contacts. And then the next morning he put his contacts in. <laughs> they burned. Burns. Burns. <laughs> yeah. I left them in, though. I mean, it wasn't that bad. But there was definitely some residual burning for a while until they flushed themselves out. But, yeah, they're probably so, not nearly as bad as what Gallon experienced. No, Although I'm no. going to claim that it was just to. Yeah, man up. Yeah. 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 Um, so it was, a, I mean, you know, the event was a lot of fun. There was a lot of people who, who were coming and going in my house over the course of the weekend. Um, a, a lot of people came to the event. Um, I, I just, you know, a couple of, there's a lesson, mistakes were made, lessons were learned as far as I'm concerned, people that just showed up and shot, you know, whatever, um, they enjoyed it. I, I certainly learned a little bit about my managerial skills, and my organizational skills, I, it, the, it, basically, it took too long. It took way too long to get through the day. Um, I really wanted to avoid a situation where people were shooting, and if I had planned and organized the groups better, uh, that would have been a thing that would have happened. I should have divided people into two groups and had one group shooting one event, and then swap. Um, the trap couldn't be shot while the, while the steel challenge was being shot, but the silhouette and the, um, steel challenge could have been shot simultaneously. And I should have did that. And you didn't yeah. realize how many people were going to do steel challenge though. It was supposed to be like, Oh, probably a dozen or so will do it. And it turned out to be what 40 or something. Everyone, but one every, yeah, like it was like everybody shot it. And so it was like, Holy crap. Well, here, let's make three squads and let's rig it. You start here and we'll start here and off we go. And, yeah, yeah. It, it it ate up the day, but it, it was did. fun though. It was, it I was mean, I think everybody it, had a good time. It's just that, you know, because it ate up so much time, then trap ended up eating up a bunch of time, and then it just okay. Well, I guess we're not getting to some of the stuff we had planned. Yeah, and people got tired of waiting around for the awards and stuff. And yep. So anyway, we'll make it better next time. That's yep. how we. That's how we learn. Yep. So the next year's charity shoot. There's some announcements. Um, a host podcast has been selected we're not going to say who yet because we actually announced it on their show the host and myself um it will be held in edmonton alberta with adriel and adriel has your club come on board yet officially yeah their game Excellent. i need to get a date and get approval and all that kind the of date, stuff but, uh, the I to them and uh and their game the data the date will have to be the same as last year or uh, yeah, it's 2018. So it'll be uh, Saturday, July 6th, or Saturday, July 8th, whatever that is. And the charity is yet to be selected. Sixth. So it'll be Saturday, July 6th, 2019. It'll be at the Chaz Gun Club, and uh, the host will be announced soon. What else? Yeah, more on that later. Um, then, so after the cherry shoot, I went to Calgary and hung out with Jeff Reese from the Calgary Shooting Center. I got to go to the Calgary Shooting Center. I got to test fire the SLR, which was awesome. Um, and then I got to shoot gophers. Matthew didn't. I did. That was awesome. I'm, uh, can I hang up on you on this thing? No, actually, you can't. I then can't, actually. How do I do that? Then I went to Edmonton with Matthew and Adriel. We had a really uh, horrible pub night. Only three people showed up, so... That was bad. So to the three people. It was people. a polar opposite of the year before. The year before, it's like, oh, 12 people are going to show up. And like 25, 30 people showed up. Yeah. It was really weird. Yeah. And actually, the uh, somebody I worked with all this year, she actually happened to be in town. So her and her husband came to join us. Thank goodness, because for a while, they were the only ones. And then two other listeners showed up. And then a third listener showed up just as we were paying our bills. <laughs> so. Um, and then, of course, the Ferlachi Fundamentals Beyond Fundamentals happened. Matthew talked about that. I enjoyed it very much. It was a lot of fun. And then I went to Vancouver. And when I was in Vancouver, I met up with Dustin. Now, Dustin was a guest on our show a couple of months back. He's a prop master in Vancouver. So he talked to us about his experience in the film industry oh, yeah. and firearms. And um, I also met up with Rod. So Dustin and Rod and I went shooting at the Abbotsford Club for a little while. And later on in the week, I went back to Chilliwack to hook up with Rod and the cameraman for the CCFR TV show. And we went out to tour international barrels and got to meet Ryan Stacy. That place is legit off the hook. It is the real deal. A lot of money has been poured into 
this place so that they can make world-class match grade barrels oh have, have you guys have any uh matthew have you seen their youtube video they've got a video where they like go through like their barrel making process it's crazy it nice. is i should watch that yeah. it is they're doing stuff that other people aren't doing to make sure that the the finish of the barrel is just as high quality as it can possibly be um it was really awesome and ryan stacy like you you, you you hear him on on podcasts and stuff and you think he's cool then and you meet him in person and he is also legit really cool awesome guy so he's going to be making for me a 7.62 by 40 wt to go into my slr he's also making me an ar10 barrel to go on the stag that i have on order at the calgary shooting center so for those listeners that don't know stag has come out with an ar10 that was um, given a non-restricted frt number so that's cool and then, yes, SummerSlam pre-match is going on with Matthew. Today was a lot better than yesterday, both energy-wise and shooting-wise. I was sick in Edmonton and sick with a head cold the whole time I was in Vancouver. And I got home, and I was, like, trying to adjust the four-hour time difference. So I was going to bed at night, Vancouver time, and waking up in New Brunswick, New Brunswick time. That was making for a really long couple of days. Um, got in on Sunday and got right back to work on the range on Saturday, or on Monday, rather. And then pre-match started Tuesday. Matthew came over right away on Monday. We got to work on the range. We shot pre-match Tuesday, finished the pre-match today. bunch of our Ipsic shooting buddies from Nova Scotia came up. Um, Captain Andy and Stephen Casey. Ginger Snaps was supposed to be there. Ginger Snaps, if you're listening... Give me an update on that thing you told me about. There's a reason why he had to bail at the very, very last minute. And uh, it's a little concerning. I haven't had time to touch base with him, so I hope all is well. And, Don, you could have came. What's your problem? Really, though? Yeah, dude. Don. Right? Come on, man. God, slacker. No excuse. Probably doesn't even listen, so whatever. Probably. Jeez. Yeah. Um, oh, and then on Monday... So I'm at the range. I'm like, guys, I got to leave at four o'clock. I got some other errands to do. And I did like, right. We had legit things to do. Right, Matthew. We went and we needed baggies for the chronograph stage and we needed some ink for the printer. And we also need to go pick this up. So for the listeners who are not watching live, I am holding in my hands in front of the camera, my SLR. That's right. My SLR arrived on Monday. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but. I got mine on Monday. Oh, oh, throw it in their face. I don't know about you guys, but I got mine on Monday. I got mine on Monday. Adriel, where's your 180? Oh, you know, I... uh... Here's my SLR, Adriel. The SLR you said would never come. I know it looks like I'm giving you the finger the way I'm holding it, but it just happens to be how I'm holding it. It's just a coincidence. It's a coincidence. Um, Yeah, man. So up front, I'm rocking the Maple Ridge a straight fluted barrel with the Maple Ridge handguard and a Maple Ridge flash hider, which is soon coming off for a comp that's being sent to me to test and evaluate. More on that later. Um, up top, I've got a Vortex Strike Eagle 1-8 to eight, and then some Magpul Furniture, Daniel Defense Lower Parts Kit, Phase 5 Full Auto Bolt Carrier Group. Um, and then here is a big scratch. Can you see that, Adriel? Is it showing up on my camera? Oh, yeah, I can see it good. Brand new rifle, and I gouged the side of the receiver. Oh, man. I'm not sure if I grabbed the pin out of my the bolt stop pin to hold it in the receiver, either from my Daniel Defense or another lower parts kit. Anyway, it was a little too big, so it wasn't going into the receiver very well. So I take it out, and then I put the roll pin punch in there to open the hole up a little bit and you know clear out the anodizing. And then when I pull the roll pin punch out, right down the side of the receiver. Yeah, but you know what? I don't care. This is going to be a three-gun rifle. It's going to be a hunting rifle. It's going to get a lot more scratched up than this. I didn't buy a Cadillac. I bought a hunting rifle. So it's Yeah, gonna it's going to get scratched up. It's, it's going to get scratched uh, yep. Yeah, whatever. A couple of dings, no big deal. Don't even care. Don't no. even care. Uh, the scratch is not going to affect it. So, um, you know, first impressions, it's amazing. It's an AR, right? Like, it's not an AR, but it's an AR. Um, there are actually some features of this design that are an improvement upon the air. There's zero play in the upper and lower. The way they designed it, it's on rails. So it's got a takedown screw in the front here. And so the screw is an Allen screw. It, you screw it into um, a Healy coil that's into the upper receiver. Mm-hmm. And then there's a little set screw there to lock it in place. Um, 
But when you loosen that screw, then the top and lower halves pull apart. They're on rails. Because they're on rails, it's so super tight. There's no play. Um, so uh, I think li the listeners probably want a stress test of some kind. Can you just drop it down the stairs that you have over there? And let's just see how tight they are after you drop them down. <laughs> he did. He <laughs> dropped the gun on the floor. The cats on the bed here all just took off. How about that? <laughs> I was just joking, but uh, thank you oh, for everything. Seems your fine. Very expensive rifle on the ground. <laughs> yeah, well, everything. Uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, my Vortex scope has uh, like whatever warranty. It doesn't even matter. And uh, yeah, so the only thing that was damaged was the floor. I took a gouge out of the <laughs> floor. But that's these fine. Things happen. Yeah, these things happen. So anyway, um, <clears throat> the. Maple Ridge stuff is, you know, to look at it and say, oh, it's awesome. Before I shot it was, I was apprehensive. Yes, it looks awesome. The quality is amazing. The fit and finish is amazing. I took it out to the range and off the box of my truck, 50 meters ish. We never really measured it. Could have been more. I don't know. It certainly wasn't less. Um, after about four shots, I found... Um, the center of the target. I never had to touch the windage on the scope once. I, only, I just play with elevation. And I put three shots inside of an inch off the back of the truck with like little to no support. So um, when I find a load that this thing really likes, it's a one and eight twist barrel. Um, maybe try, I might try some, even some 77s. I don't know. But right now it's shooting 55s great. But like when it comes for to hunting, I will, uh, you know, try and develop a nice, load that's super duper accurate and really see what yeah, i can 65. get out of this barrel that 65 grain soft point or something yeah well, right now uh, a lot of my match ammo is is reloaded using 55 grain soft points they were sent to me by mistake when i was supposed to get full metal jackets but whatever i use them anyway so hmm. so yeah maccabee defense man it's awesome get yours from the calgary shooting center today and um you well, will get not... in line to get yours from the yeah. Get in line to get yours and yeah. and Maple Ridge guys, yeah, it's nice stuff. Though the way some I haven't weighed it yet, but compared to my three gun rifle, even though this has this long flash hider and an eighteen point six inch barrel, the overall length of this rifle is actually shorter than my current three gun rifle, and it has a. 18 inch barrel, but it's got a crazy competition comp on there. It's got a, a Benny Hill three port comp that is just ridiculous and like three inches long. Mm -hmm. So it adds a lot of length to that rifle. But anyway, um, it's like a pound or more lighter than my three gun rifle. So I'm going to start ripping the competition parts from my three gun rifle and throw them in my SLR. Why not? I mean, it's it's non restricted now. You don't need multiples. Um, do you have an Allen key? Would we would we be able to see like you taking yes. that off there and see yeah, the sure. rails? Yeah. So, yeah. Come on, Doug. Find the uh, Allen key there. My name is not Doug. You know, while you get dig that Allen key out, maybe I should tell the story of Doug. Do you have to? I should. We were so buying match related stuff. So. What's that? We were buying match related stuff. We were Before buying. Before you tell the Doug story, at... hold on, Adriel. I keep the Allen keys. Mm -hmm. For the takedown procedure in the grip of my Magpul stock. Totally so they're always sense. with the gun. Yeah, yeah. totally makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, an AR, you have a quick takedown. This, you have to have the tools with it if you want to take it down when you're at the range or something. So, it, yeah, it works out perfectly. Anyway, we were buying ink and stuff at the local uh, uh, office supply store. Office supply store. And I don't know how it came up, but these things come up. And Trevor was there and, and she was putting his name down on the receipt and she said, did I get your name right? And he looked at it and says, nope, my name's not Doug. So, so first, I mean, this lady knows him. So it was just kind of funny that she thought he was Doug when clearly he's Trevor. So anyway, so I, and it came up somehow one way or another and, and they started guessing each other's age. So he said, okay, come on. Tell, how old do you think I am? And, uh, and she said, 57. Tre Trevor's not 57. <laughs> no, Trevor's nowhere near 57. And, and it wasn't even like she just looked at me and said 57. She was like, 57? I was thinking like if she was 51, I'm like, okay, sure. But no, seven. <laughs> so I'm calling him Senior Doug. El Senior Doug. Yeah. All so right. There, so Trevor has it, uh, has it disassembled for those of you who are watching. And those of you who aren't, you'll have to log on and watch. So, Adriel, there's the screw. It's just a button yeah. head Allen yeah. key screw. Right? Yeah. 
So once that screw is removed, you drop the hammer and watch this. That's it. Ah, rails. And then to reassemble. It's easier when you're not on camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, really. You, I there. broke my AR. <laughs> well, look, it's just like that. Then you drop it back in, push it together. There you go. Yeah. Right there. Push it together. It's just look, it's literally like there's nothing to it. It's that easy. You line the notches up, push it back together. Cool. It is simple. If anyone whines about that, well, no. Well, you can see how that would reduce the uh, upper and lower exactly. like wiggle because it's like it, they're machined on rails there. You, once you yeah. screw it down, it's not moving anywhere. Yeah, It doesn't move a bit. It is locked up tight. And you don't have to worry about, well, how much do I torque this screw? Is it going to affect accuracy? It's not like action screws in a stock. The rails keep it together in a in a positive position and there's no you know worrying about anything else that's it just tighten it down and then there's a small um torx and that is for the lock screw to make sure that that screw doesn't come out sweet yeah and if you don't plan on taking it apart very often you know go ahead throw a little blue loctite on there something removable yep so yeah, but don't do that because you'll have to take it out to clean your bolt off, anyways. Yeah, well, uh, the I blue mean, Loctite I think should go on the trigger. There's a screw for the trigger group on the inside. I don't think that can go anywhere once the two halves are put together. Oh, that's probably true. That screw probably is being held down by the other part of the gun, isn't it? Yeah. Depper. Yeah. yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, that's not going to go anywhere either. Yeah, the, the trigger. trigger well, I think everybody knows how the trigger assembly works, but no, I don't. No, I don't think so nope. The trigger group. Box. Yeah. The the so it takes AR trigger groups that work with the two pins, and there's a box that goes inside the receiver. You install your two trigger pins, your hammer, and your trigger sear into that box using your two pins, and then that unit then drops into the lower receiver and is held in place with one little screw, and you are done. Neat. Yep. So Monday. The plan is to, because right now we're finding that it's kind of mag sensitive or uh, mag picky. So I've got a bunch of different versions of LAR mags. I got a and bunch I of don't think it's going to stay picky as soon no. as, in, until you wear out the anodizing on the inside of the magwell. The magwell yeah. is just a little tight from the anodizing, I think. You could probably even take some emery cloth and clean that out a little bit, and it would probably open it up just enough to get those mags to drop out nice and reliably. Yep, and seat. Some of them don't want to seat, but I think yeah. that's an LAR well, yeah, I mean, you had some duct tape wrapped around them. The magwell must extend a little bit further than your other AR, yeah. possibly, and that could yeah. be why the tape's yeah. hanging up in there. So Monday we're going to go to the range and uh, with every AR mag I own and see which ones work and which ones don't and then correct things as we go. Adriel, what about you? What have you been up to? Oh, a couple things. Uh, I bought... Yeah, this guy right here. And for oh, the this guy is... Yes, this is a, a plus size SKS, if you will. <laughs> uh, big boy SKS. This is an SVT40. And it's one of the six gill guys. And it has an SVT stock. Last time I reviewed one of these was four plus years ago. So uh, I am going to re review this guy, put a new video out because my last one was like, yeah, you know, we're getting these things in Canada for about two, 250 bucks. So here's the pros and cons at that price point. And the price point is quite different now. <laughs> and yes. probably some of our listeners are just screaming at the, uh, <laughs> at the show right now. How come you didn't buy like three, but uh, yeah, I got this guy here. Um, it's very clean. Lots of Cosmo still on it. Uh, all the internal parts were still all caked with Cosmoline. So uh uh, super minty uh, SVT here. And uh, I actually bought not one, but two jogging strollers. And this is gun related. My kids are yes, way too old to uh, to fit in a jogging stroller. But uh, again, for the viewers out there, there's my uh, my beautiful jogging stroller in the back. That there. is a nice one. You've got yeah. lots of space on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, just to describe people for the podcast, uh, the idea here is is if you go to a three-gun match, um, at Chaz, you leave all your you leave your stuff in your car, your truck, or whatever, right? Um, lots of room for it. Uh, you could there's lots of parking at each of the stages. You don't need to, uh, you know, go back and forth, and, and, and it's not very long. I'm going to uh, BC uh, on Friday here. I'm going with Chad, who's uh, called into this show, and, and one of the guys from my three gun club, and we're not in the same squad, so I'm not going to have that truck that's going to have all my stuff in it. So I need to be able to like 
have it portable. Uh, some uh, some matches you go to, you will not be able to go back and forth between your truck and the stage. So you need to keep everything on you. In Ipsic, this isn't a big deal. You carry your pistol on your holster. You carry all your mags on your on your belt. And maybe like a little bag with your ammo in it and some water and stuff, and you're good to go, right? For three gun, you've got your rifle, your shotgun, your ammo for your rifle, shotgun, and pistol, your pistol on your belt. You've got uh, your sunblock, your mosquito spray, your food, your water, and it's just too much to carry um, stage to stage. And it's, it's kind of unsafe as well. You put all your guns in one case, and then you get to the safe area, and you uncase, and you bring them out, and you put them on the rack. And you do that times like six or seven or eight Slows stages. Slows everything the butt. Yeah. 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 My so, range is one of those ranges where you need the redneck stroller. Yeah. Now, the idea is with the redneck stroller, you get one of these jogging strollers that has like three wheels on it. They're easy wheeling and they handle the weight quite a bit better. Uh, you run your guns uh, pointing down into the, into the ground. You still run a chamber flag on them. So that's it's like very obvious that they're safe and they carry all your stuff and you like very nicely stroll in between your stages. It's kind of like a, a golf cart, right? You know your golf cart's like. Well, what kind of what kind of clubs should I use on this stage here? My shotgun, my rifle, and my pistol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, kind of ends up being one of those. So all you do is you go on Kijiji, you look for someone who's selling their jogging strollers for like fifty bucks, and you show up. and You're like, eh, the best I can do is forty, and <laughs> you leave with a, a jogging stroller. You rip out the seat, you put on your uh, your gun bag, and in whichever way you want to there, and uh, and that's now your. Uh, mode of transportation for all your guns and the, the advantage with this as well is you can carry more stuff you can carry an umbrella you can carry lots of water you can carry your food all that kind of stuff goes with you uh, you don't need to go back to your truck for the day it's uh, it's self-contained uh let's see i wrote an article on why you should join the ccfr it's been uh, well overdue and i finally did one of them um let's see here i did talk to some of the guys from the range and so far things are looking good for the uh, charity shoot i do need to get like more information to them on uh on when and when i'd like to to book the range for and and kind of the some of the arrangement around that so i'm still working on that um and then i wanted to ask you guys and maybe some of our listeners because i don't know how much you guys are into air guns what kind of air gun would you recommend for pests something that would definitely kill like a squirrel or a magpie or something like that something that's uh a gamo uh, to use do you do you care about semi-auto ability that's a word. No, now. no, okay, no, no. So you want to get not. a Crossman 2240 is what you're looking for. Oh, you want a handgun recommendation or a rifle? Uh, either would be fine. But the handgun's know. really cool and very accurate. I have one. I've hunted with it successfully in New Brunswick, Snowshoe Hare, um, Grouse. What else I believe, I is that, that the one with the very thin barrel on top that you kind of crank over to, to No, load? that's a good one too, though. That one doesn't require CO2. The one that I have has a CO2 cartridge that goes in underneath the barrel. Um, mm. Very inexpensive. They're less than $100 and uh, extremely accurate, very customizable. It's one of the most popular um, pellet CO2-powered pellet pistols in the world, really. Uh, and I you're under 500 pellet. FPS? Oh yes, yep. Well, it's uh, I, I chronograph mine at 460 is what my uh, hmm. 22 caliber pellets are coming out of it at. Is so that? It, go ahead, go ahead. Adriel, no, Is that a requirement for you that it be under 500? Has to well, be. Or it's a restricted it's firearm. Yeah, it's, it's not a restricted. Oh, yeah, okay. But he said air gun. Okay, I, I'm sorry. If he's going pistol, it has to be under 500. Mm-hmm. Or it's restricted. He can only shoot at the range. If he so, wants to go with a full rifle, then I don't know what to recommend because I don't get, have any of those that are. I use a twenty-two if I need a rifle. <laughs> okay, well, so a couple of questions, Adriel. Why are you asking for an air firearm recommendation? Uh, say at my parents' place where there's uh, squirrels and magpies in the yard and that kind of thing, and okay. you don't want to use a twenty-two because it's overpowered for the distance, right. and uh, an air gun would be quieter and uh, less offensive. I like um, the Gamo air rifles, the real ones that are like 1,200 feet per second with Gamo pellets. They will punch a hole through a steel watering can, like a steel coffee can. They got silly amounts of power. They don't make any noise. 177? Yep. And CO2 powered or like crank it powered? Kind crank of thing? it power. If okay. you get a crank it power, make sure you get a nitro piston, not a spring piston. Mm, I've Which read about the, that. The, yeah. the Gamos probably are that. They're not cheap. It costs as much as a real firearm, and they require a PAL. You can get some gamos that are under 
the 500, but you know, you can, I've, I've played with one of those 1200 feet per second gamos and they are amazing. They aren't super quiet though, because they are supersonic. So you are getting a supersonic crack. If mm. you want, if you don't want that supersonic crack, get, uh, make sure it's a thousand feet per second. I 1200. Yeah. Well, you'd get that if you went to like a 22 rather than a 177, because the, tw- the 22 caliber air air rifle pellets still have like a decent chunk of lead. There's, going a, there's on. a good amount of decompression going on whenever that pellet leaves the barrel. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah. I don't I don't remember the one I had. Matthew must have been under 1200 then because there was no crack. No, yeah, yeah. If there's no crack, it was under 1200. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think that's a good question for the listeners. I'm sure we have some listeners out there who shoot air rifles. So yeah. if uh, you're looking for an air rifle, and uh, I, I'd say the listeners should be the people to help you out here. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to hear their recommendations. So basically, you want accurate, quiet, powerful, and not too expensive. and cheap. And uh, good quality. And uh, uh, what, else can I, what else can I ask for? Uh, <laughs> Tell me out a of Max. Or a Stoger. Be nice. Um, <laughs> non-restricted would be nice if it's non-restricted and powerful at the same time. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, yep. It, can I make this any more unreasonable? No, no. Yeah. Carry on. No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for me. Cool. All right, then. Let's move on to our next item. And that is upcoming events. Adriel, do you have any three gun events that are up and coming? Yeah, I'm going to go to the uh, BC Redneck Three Gun Championship, uh, fifth annual this weekend. Uh, that's going to be in Prince George. It's quite a drive, but uh, it should be good. Uh, let's see. DSS match is running a three gun championship uh, match at the Thompson Mountain Sportsman Association. Uh, BTSA is running their Civic Holiday three gun match on August 6th. Chaz is running a, a two-day double header. Uh, the August 11th match will be a three-gun match. August 12th will be a historical two-gun match. So um, if anyone's in the Edmonton area, they want to try competition shooting and they've got a pistol or rifle or they've got like just a pistol and needs to like borrow a rifle, let me know. Come out to this uh, this two-gun shoot because it's it's supposed to be super approachable and we should be able to get uh, lots of new people in um, with a very safe, like beginner-friendly uh, match setup. Cool. Uh, Lake, Lakeland Three Gun has an, a match on August twelfth, uh, and the Wapiti Three Gun Championship is on August twenty fifth and twenty sixth. That'll be at Grand Prairie. That's a a really good three gun match as well. There's a bunch of really good shooters out of Grand Prairie and Peace River. Awesome. Maple Seed events are always ongoing, and if you're looking for one in your area, you can go to www.mapleseedrifleman.com and check their schedule. See if there's one coming to a town near you. Um, we have, I don't know who we are. We have a CRPS match. Who's the we in this? Is that like slam fire or how about there is we as in Canadians? Canadians have a CRPS match on August 12th. Mm -hmm. I guess since it's a Canadian thing. Well, we're in Canada. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And it's Canadian sport, right? Being rim fire precision. Anyway, um, there's a match on August 12th at Nicola Valley Fish and Game Club in Merritt, BC. Visit rimfireprecision.ca for more information and for links to register. News. Oh, boys. Take your pick, it says. Conservatives. Ooh. Well, Stay they're all on. basically the same thing. The- yeah, basically. Let's, uh, all right, give a little announcement here. Um, the liberals are taking the idea of a pistol of a handgun ban, seriously. Toronto wanted one just Again. for Toronto. They didn't learn their lesson the first time when they got, like, just spanked. Right, but now there was just a, um, you know, in their words, it's going to be like a slaughter of two young girls, and mm-hmm. it's going to be like conservative gun laws are costing children their lives. I think that mm-hmm. bad things are coming, and they're going to jump on the rhetoric and the fear-mongering. They're already doing that. Yep. So there was a yep. there was a shooting in Toronto with an illegal firearm, and uh, the solution yeah. is make fire make uh, handguns more illegal. Yep. They're already yep. illegal. You can't have them unless you have a license. Yeah. Like so, uh, how much more controlled can they be? You can't you can't just take them away from everybody and expect them to be controlled now because the ones that people are using in crimes are not coming from Canada. They're coming across the border. They're being smuggled in. So, the majority, yeah. but the the, the end game is it, yeah. the the end game is to take ours. 
I know, I know, but it is, it doesn't make any sense. No, to it me. doesn't. But that's what we're mine. I didn't shoot anybody downtown. We're not going to make sense of it. We have to, we have to fight the stupidity, mm-hmm. and we have to rally our listeners to fight the stupidity. They're after your guns, even though your guns haven't hurt anybody and you haven't hurt anybody. They can't take criminals' guns because criminals don't obey the laws, so they want yours instead. So be ready to fight because it's coming. So maybe we can talk a little, a little bit about who, like, what are we fighting? Who are we fighting? The, the liberals are rumored or are said to be con- strongly considering a handgun ban. Uh, the NDP's uh, Singh is basically saying the same thing. He's he's urging for municipalities to have the power to ban handguns. Uh, personally, I think this is a uh, so restricted in RPAL licenses have really gone up recently. Really gone up, like. What was, what was the, the last stat? Doubled in the last five years, six years? Yeah, yeah. something like that. It's gone up They've, a lot. Our, our PAL owners have gone up quite a bit. And some of those people will be liberal voters. And, and they're probably contacting the party saying, hey, what are you guys doing? This may be a preemptive uh, uh, strike against getting more gun ownership in the uh, liberal and NDP parties to make it more inconvenient for them to have firearms so that they can still keep gun control as this like whipping boy of uh of politics for them so right now liberal party says oh we were considering banning handguns what's the what's the real political risk to them very little right uh fast forward five years at the pace we're going right now and it will they will face real backlash from uh, from their voters just be based on the number of people who are who are buying these things right uh so i don't know am i going too much on a soapbox here too crazy nope. Too crazy no, conspiracy yeah, theory? No, right. no, there's, no Adriel. <laughs> keep going. Keep Get going. Get my tinfoil yeah. hat on. Yes. Are, like by it's allowing municipalities anymore. and the cities to ban them, they are going to cut debt. Like without the fault of their own. Oh no, we just enabled the municipalities to do what's right for them. They're going to cut down on the number of our pal owners within their own ranks, and therefore be able to continue to blame us for this kind of stuff and continue to, oh, there was a mass shooting. Oh, we're going to add more gun control on. We're doing our part and we're uh, we're adding more on in, in terms of these gun laws, even though it's we all know it's not doing anything. This guy got his gun guns illegally. And then the first thing they're going to say is, uh, you know, let's let's put in a handgun ban. Right. So I think this is like a preemptive way to cut down on a potential future problem for them. Yeah, well, I think that they know that Justin has destroyed the party and they're not going to get reelected and they're going to use this as a platform to try and get reelected. That's my suspicion that they are just going to, Hey, reelect us. So we can keep time, you though. safe. It wasn't it, it Alan was Rock who country. ran with, uh, with, uh, uh, we're going to ban handguns and they got just obliterated. It was Paul Martin said that he Martin. was going to ban handguns and it didn't work, but, that wasn't after two children were killed in Toronto and it wasn't Toronto. I think they're going to, they're going to dance on these children's graves to try and scare Canadians into voting for them. So the question now is then if that's the case, what do we do to help stop it? Well, uh, the the thing I put on here, we have to make sure that non gun owners know that what they are spewing is rhetoric and lies and they're playing politics we need to rally our people to make sure that we vote conservative. Oh. Yeah. Those are all yeah. good things. And we had a gentleman at the range today saying, you know what? We shouldn't just be talking about guns. We should be talking about freedoms because the, the current liberal government is violating more than our firearms freedoms. They're violating all kinds of freedoms. They're borderline tyrannical. They lie to us. They blatantly tell lies to the public that's a politician thing but like the, the, yeah this this party is lying about a lot of like this it's it's the most clear for us because it's the most like obvious to us right we, we right. take a look at gun control and be like yeah but so this, we this used, guy this guy just used an illegal handgun and now we're you you want to double ban handguns the, the, what's the what's the sense right hmm. yeah yeah I, I, I don't see this. Yeah. Like, it, it seems too obvious to me to to like get on top of a soapbox on it. It seems to a point where, um, it's strategic from their end, and that's why they're pushing for it. I don't think this is a this is a, a way for them to get votes. Oh, I think yeah. this is a strategic thing to prevent a future problem for them. No, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that bet. I'll be a, I'll be a hundred percent as Matthew and I have been joking about for two days. 
<laughs> it's, it's going to be a thing. So, yeah. all right. Well, well, let's uh, let's keep the train rolling and jump into our main topic here. Uh, uh, if you want to contact your member of parliament, try OneClearVoice.ca. It's I think it's the Gun Blog that oh. put it together. I think it's Sorry, Drew, just I didn't a, see that. It, it, it's a quick way to um, contact your MPs uh, using a similar messaging. So it's a URL, oneclearvoice.ca, and that helps you contact your member of parliament? Yes. The, awesome. It's clear instructions. It makes the whole thing easier to reach out. Whether it does anything or not, maybe not, but at least it puts a pressure on them. If we can, if we can get enough noise about this like sooner, uh, the Liberal Party might think twice about, um, about pulling any kind of crap on us, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, now, how about the main topic? And welcome to the show, Ken Nelson. Ken is uh, owner of Practice Score. He also runs Hard as Hell Multigun. He's a match director for Nationals, runs and is a lead trainer for the Tactical Performance Center. And I'm probably selling you short on a whole bunch of other things here, Ken. <laughs> so uh, maybe uh, what, what else are you into? Uh, well, I'm a, I've been married 30 plus years. I have two grown children. Mm-hmm. One of them's looking at wedding venues. Oh, oh, so that's fun. <laughs> yep. So, well, I, I'm perfectly fine with it. I like families. So, uh, I think that sums it up. Um, I also run a shooting range, you know, a large one, the Southern Utah practical shooting range. Uh, and, um, that's about it. You know, um, that might be enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be enough. <laughs> I'm sure well, I'm forgetting you, something, uh... but, yeah. That's what I do. I think you've got us all beat in terms of like quantity of activities because <laughs> that's a that is a pile of them. Um, but maybe just to start off the top here, uh, uh, practice scores is, uh, is something that uh, uh, most IPSC competitors are familiar with. It's it's definitely getting into three gun as the way to score, and uh, you know in the states is in USPSA, IDPA. And a bunch of other sporting sh- uh, shooting sports. Uh, how'd you get into building it? And like, it, it is the most popular platform out there these days. How'd you How'd you even get into that? For, first, Ken, let me say, as a match yeah. director, thank you. Oh, you're there's, welcome. There is <laughs> a special. You. you have earned your spot in heaven. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I and I maybe that maybe I should go do a few things to you know, now that I've earned it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know how it happened was my son and I got into practical shooting. And we went to matches and I never really thought about scoring. Uh, uh, we'd shoot a match on Saturday and on Wednesday or Thursday, we get the scores <laughs> Yep. and uh, nobody made any big deal of it. Nobody thought anything about it. Uh, and then our, our stats guy got cancer and um, we quickly deduced in our small club that I was probably the only one who could figure out how to install easy win score. And so I did it and I did the stats, uh, the next match and it took me about five hours. Yeah. And it sucked. Uh, like yeah. a, it sucked. I did it wrong. Um, and the kind of the backstory is that I, when I said I'd do it, I figured my wife would do it. And <laughs> uh-huh. true story, that, this is, that went terrific. We're yeah. still married. Uh-huh. Um, because I, I heard her say, hell no. And I slowly backed out of the room. Mm, good call. Um, she, that was actually a, that's a verbatim quote. Um, I might've, we actually just talked about this yesterday and she doesn't recall the conversation, but she's pretty sure that I caught her at a bad moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, unknown bad moment, but, uh, yeah. So that, so what happened was I did that match and then immediately I was unhappy and, so I, I went out and did some Googling and found uh, a POM system. Uh, I think it was called Stage Score, using the POM PDAs. And I immediately ordered that and bought 20 POMs off eBay. And that's what we did for the next four months-ish. And I just kept losing POMs. And so one of my engineers came in. I run a software company. And he said he wanted to write an app. He wanted to learn to write an app. And I said, well, I might have an app idea. Yeah, Yeah. that's literally how it went. And I never had any intention of it going beyond Southern Utah practical shooting range. I never told USPSA I was using it. I, I, we engineered it to generate the same files as easy wind score reverse engineered that I used it for months without telling anybody. 
But then people shot with us, and they were stunned that I had the scores ready, like at the end of the match. Um, and that kind of leaked out, and then it went to Vegas and Lake Havasu, and then uh, – The world. Yeah. And then the world. Uh, and then we got uh, we were asked to do the state match, and then I'm like, I'm not going back to the paper. Yep. And it just sort of went from there. And it was completely inadvertent accidental, and it was totally meant to solve – my problem as a, as a stats person initially, and then later my problem that I have as a match director, and then later as a problem I have as a match director for huge matches. So you can see the iteration. Solving Ken's stats problems, solving Ken's match director club level match director problems, and then solving Ken running a 600-person nationals. Mm. You know, that's the iteration of, of... And we're still in that phase. Every time I turn it on or do an update i find a cooler feature that wasn't yeah. there the time before it's like it's almost like you are anticipating our concerns or our problems or i'm sure you must get flooded with emails from match directors saying have you thought about this how can yeah. you fix that and then there's another version then there's another version yeah uh, we, we we uh we do get i think in a typical week i'm looking at several hundred contacts from match directors or, or shooters, competitors. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, but we, we have, I think seven or eight people on the project now, and we're starting to get some community support in terms of helping. So it's manageable. Um, but yeah, it's, it, you know, let's just say I don't normally have a completely uninterrupted Sunday evening. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine. Right? And that's just, you know, that's something you step into and you do it and you do it because you love the people and you, you want to help the sport and you've been there. So fortunately that's, uh, that is diminishing. I mean, it seems to be just kind of working. And now, um, as a match director this year, so like every year I'm adding something new to it started off, um, my association had bought tablets for clubs to use and they all stayed on the shelf. No one mm-hmm. was motivated enough to learn to use it. Plus, we knew that you had to synchronize tablets. We didn't fully understand what that was or what that meant. Um, and then one day we went to a match in the rain. And mm-hmm. I, I said, I will never shoot on paper score sheets in the rain again. The next yeah. match, I will have this practice score thing figured out. And then... Um, Last year, we used it for the first time at my large annual level three match. And now this year, we're using it again, of course. Well, we use it exclusively now everywhere in this province. And now this year, we're actually, um, we have the little printers hooked up. The oh, little cool. handheld okay. point yeah. of sale printers. So yeah. we've completely eliminated any pens or paper or clipboards. You right. hit approve and boom, the little receipt then comes off the printer. And we, we ran it yeah. today. As a matter of fact, Ken, we ran it today. For the first time at my club, it was the pre-match for our annual level three, and everything went off without a hitch. The next thing I'm going to do is, well, I I did it for a smaller match, was um, to do the registration directly through the website. That that is, again, a game changer. People register on the website and then download the, the, the register information right to the tablet. I used to get manual pieces of paper, PDF forms, people would download them off the internet, fill them out and either scan them, fax them, or take a picture of the registration sheet and email it to me. It's done. Everything's electronic now. Payment by electronic. Registration electronic. Just Registration, waivers waivers if you choose. Um, Payment. You know, I'm, I'm, like right now, I have four matches going on representing about 700 competitors, 700 or 800 competitors. Um, and I manage them as a, from a you know, administrative point of view, of maybe 10 minutes a day. And the secret to it is I really just let the competitors self-manage, right? They deal with it. They do their registration. If they want to change divisions, the they do it. They can click yep. the, they just go in and do it. Yep. Um, and if they want to know who's in a division, they can figure, they can figure that out. If they want to know if there's 23 GMs in a division and they want to go division shop somewhere else, or if they want the <laughs> challenge, I'm not saying not not naming names. <laughs> I don't get those questions anymore. It's all yeah. right there, and that's the kind of the incremental. You know, I always I always 
life-wise, I always think about what question I'm going to ask myself when I wake up in the morning, right? That, that's kind of how I guide. So for practice score, the question I ask is how am I going to make, how am I going to make match directors lives better this morning or today that, and then for my other companies and my other activities, like tactical performance center, how am I going to make shooters better today? And, Amazing. and so that's how we get that incremental uh, improvement. It's just a matter of what you ask yourself when you get going in the day. Last, yeah. l- last little war story. And then I'll let Adriel get to his line of questions. Um, and I just want to let people know, I want to tell this story to you, Ken, in case you're not aware of it, just so you know, the kind of support that your team provides last year was my first year running practice score at our large match and very early on, like the registration for this match opens about eight months in advance, sometimes 10 months mm-hmm. in advance, and sells out in 30 days. And at some point, I made the mistake of selecting a hosting password. And then, <laughs> yeah, you know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. the tablet that that match was created on was wiped or I shifted tablets. Anyway, could not get the results posted for the life of me. And somehow through some witchcraft, voodoo, a goat <laughs> sacrifice, I don't know. I think it was Eugene. He hacked in through the back end and was able to reset it. And I don't know why. I don't need to know why or how, but he was able to do it. And, I mean, it really saved. It was our first time running it. It was my first time using it at a major match, the match director, and I yeah. couldn't get the result passed, posted. That's panic time. That is panic time. I mean, there's a couple ways you could have skinned that cat, but having Eugene – do some wizardry was the best way and then get back onto the normal system. I remember that actually. Really? Yeah, I mean, everybody that's involved, um, digs practical shooting. Yep. Right. I mean, in, in my case, you know, I've been there with practice core, you know, in the early days going, Oh crud. Right. Um, but you know, when I, whenever I do a business and in practice score is not really a business, but I kind of treat it the same way. Um, I always try to focus on the best features that I can, the best value, and I guess free is pretty good value. Yeah. And then customer support you tell somebody about, right? Yep. And exactly. Those, you do those three things right, I don't know how a business fails. Yep. And so, wasn't wasn't the slogan when it first came out, it's free and it always will be? Same, it still is. Still yeah, is. That is the slogan. Yeah. Awesome. It's a good slogan. <laughs> now, what about, yeah. now, what about the app that you could pay for? What was that and what was the advantage of having that? And is that still a thing? It is. Yeah, we have a so we have practice score the scoring app. Then we have practice score competitor, and that's a paid app that the money goes straight through to the developer that wrote it, who happens to be Eugene. Um, and that's a way that he can earn a little bit of money from his support of practice score. Um, so whatever money comes in from either iOS app store or Android app store that comes into to my company and I just send it straight over to them. Um, and the idea there was to, to provide a way that people could track and compare and do analysis without having to do an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and he, he and I talked about pricing and I said, why don't you just price it at what it would cost to fill up a Glock Mac? Right. So we, I did the math on that. I said, God, I I don't, I'm sorry. I didn't do it for whatever ammo costs in Canada, but here in the U S it was, it's about twelve cents a round, and so we ended up at at that price. Dollar twenty, right? Because only ten cent, only ten rounds per mag. Oh, um, <laughs> not a California mag. Oh, Utah. or Practice Canadian mag. All over the U.S. Yeah, yeah, see, we got the ten rounders up here in Canada. Yeah, no, a dollar twenty. We, I think he wanted to do like the drum mags. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so that that's a popular app. A lot we get messages. I would say weekly saying they don't know how they did the sport even without that app. It just changes the way they look at it. It helps them understand the value of time versus accuracy. There's a lot of magic in there that if you use it, it helps. It helps you be better. Um, It's certainly a better use of $10 in terms of improvement than whatever you're going to stuff in that Glock mag that that one time. Um, It gets you to think about practical shooting, which is I think is if you think about anything, you're going to get better at it. Um, then the, the second app outside of scoring is called Matchbook. And there, I, you know, I, I, I don't remember what match it was, but I was walking around after, you know, in the shock of contact with 500 people um, and, and the three weeks prior to build it. And all I could see was Matchbooks on the ground 
you know, like oh, no trash way. and yep. litter. Yep. I'm like, well, and, and that wasn't even, that might not even been the last day of the match. Um, and I'm like, there's got to be a better way. And so that's where that came from. So it, it's our attempt to provide what a matchbook does electronically plus features. So you can track shooters, you can track your scores, you can register to be notified when their score enters the system for you or any other shooter. Hmm. Like if you're tracking a competitor, if you're tracking yourself, your phone buzzes, oh, there's a score for Ken Nelson. Um, so it's a designed to be a matchbook, but better. Uh, and it's also going to be our placeholder for where you can take pictures and videos by stage. And ultimately, we're working right now on a way to do video and integrate the scores and integrate the video into the score. So when you're looking at results online, there'll be a little video icon. You click that, you'll see the stage run. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, that, that's kind of the end point I see for that particular feature. And uh, I know I got engineers working on it. I, you know, I, I never – I try to avoid schedules. Um, cause they, they add needless stress. I figure people are working hard and when it's done, it's done. Um, so, but I hope I, looking at it, I think it'll be a couple of months that we start to, to, uh, leak that feature out kind of incrementally. Sweet. So definitely install the matchbook and practice score and purchase that, uh, that competitor app as well. If yeah. you want to get the full value out of it. Right. Yeah. Eugene says, thank you. <laughs> if you buy that now the uh the match uh the matchbook one that's integrated then with the website so all the uh stage designs yeah. and that kind of stuff feed through to the matchbook one yeah the sponsors come through um and and that's the other thing that actually we're working on is you can register your own sponsors and they'll they'll show up when you're looking at your results you know i'm Very just trying cool. to solve yeah. kind of the problems for for everybody um but with a priority on solving the match director's problems yeah. Well, Trevor had mentioned uh, uh, registration and that kind of thing. Uh, previously, uh, we ran our three gun, our, like our local three gun matches here uh, with no pre registration. You show up, you register that morning, we write yeah. your, your name down on the piece of paper, what division you're in, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, like 18 uh, 12. Yeah. And pre registration now, it's like, what's your name? Okay. Yeah. You're checked in. Next. Check in. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the check-in is now like eh, five minutes, maybe. Whereas before it was like it was a good thirty to forty-five minutes of messing around and getting payments and all these other kind of things that uh, is just gone now. So more time for shooting. Don't have to wake up so dang early. <laughs> That's yeah. nice too. No act. It's more accurate, um, and you can do that whether you accept payments or not online, mm-hmm. or if you do like at our club, if you want to pay online, we just charge. Three percent extra, right? To cover Which the is pretty standard fees. for e-commerce, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you can pay. So, you know, if I could say that what it's all about, it's about more play, less work, right? Um, yeah. And that's certainly a big priority for match directors and stats yep. persons. But we're starting to extend that into um, into range masters, right? We have a whole section now for range master reports that we can use to help people run a better match Um, and for competitors, like with the video and the score notifications and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. The, uh, the one that I noticed, and I don't know if this is recent or if has been in there the whole time, but the one I noticed was time per squad per stage. So you can see which of your squads were slow and you're like, Oh man, what, 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 why was this? Why was there a holdup right here? And, uh, and the app reports on that for you, which is (laughs) like, when I first saw it, I'm like, how does this do it? Oh Yeah. First person in, last person. Okay, yeah, I, I figured yeah, it out. Time now, but... between scores. Yeah, um, wow. it has a little magic to kind of figure out edits and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, we had an issue at nationals, and I went to the range masters and I gave them that data, and and they then took the data to that squad and said, you know, here's every squad ahead of you. Here's you. Get it together. Why don't you guys get your act together? And they did. <laughs> right. Nice. And you know, it's a data driven, not a personalized thing. It's yep. not you. It's data. Yeah, yeah. We're not attacking you because we don't like you. We're attacking you because you're slow. And you're <laughs> slow. <laughs> so, Ken, um, I'm just going to jump in as questions pop up for th- issues that I've encountered in the past, if that's all right. Yeah, sure. So, last year I learned some lessons where I had inputted all the shooters manually into the match, into the tablet, way too early. Um, when people drop out the day before the match or a week before the match or just don't show up when's the best time to click those three little buttons and hit delete and should i unsquad them 
leave them in their squad, delete them before the match, delete them after the match? Yeah, well, you know, it depends on if you're doing it from online. I mean, of course, when you do it online, you can withdraw them when they withdraw. Yep. Right? And typically what we do... Let's say no-shows. Yeah, no-shows. So what, what, what I tell people, again, it's a difference if you have traveling squads where the, the iPad's traveling with the, the squad. And that's our system. Have a club match. Yeah, we give the squad a tablet and off they go. In that case, I always tell people just DNF. Just hit the DNF button, right? And, and because that gives, makes the score accounted for. If you delete somebody, you don't know if they went off and shot with another squad. Right. You really don't know the true status of this individual. You don't know if they showed up late, mm. car trouble, wife was in the hospital. You know, they come up with great reasons. So here's a question. The yeah. people that I've deleted, like I before the show tonight, I got an email saying my husband and I can't make it. Mm. So I deleted them. Can I go undelete them and then put them DNF? You can. Yeah, it's uh, um, nothing's truly ever deleted in practice score. OK, it's marked as deleted. Um, well, once you start scoring, nothing's deleted. There's complete transactional log of everything you do. That's for score okay. security, score transparency. I noticed um, that because I deleted some people before the pre-match started, and they were gone, gone. But now that the match has started, I deleted them, and they just have a red bar next to them. Right. They're, that means they're, the minute you go into scoring mode, everything becomes serious yeah. at that point. And we, you know, we treat it like a bank. Right. So money comes in, comes out. Everything has to be transparent and invisible because it's a distributed system. You could have I like at, at Rocky Mountain or let, let's say Blue Ridge multi-gun in Kentucky. I'll literally have an iPad seven miles away from another iPad for stages. Right. So I cannot assume that I, I, I can't assume the complete physical control of these things. I have to have very good log of what's happened. Um, so I can recreate. So nothing ever gets deleted. Everything's recoverable, as long as you have the device. So, it's easier to do a DNF. I think it's not just easier, but it's more accurate. Okay. All you know is this person didn't show up, did not fire. Right? Yeah. You could say did not finish, but I prefer to call it did not fire. Okay. Because um, if it did not finish, I, I scored it standard. It I followed the rules of the match. Right. Yep. Right. Um, did not so fire. That, that's yeah. That's what okay. that stands for. Yeah, I uh, so Trevor, like we we do the online registration thing. So um, I withdraw people from there as we go. I cut off at like 11 p.m. night before, download everything to the master. So anyone who who has to uh, no show, I kill them off the master morning of, and then morning of I sync the master to all the uh, scoring tablets, and that way I only have to do the changes once on the master, and then the scoring tablets are more or less accurate unless someone has to like leave early because you know their wife is complaining or whatever. <laughs> right. Ooh, that, that doesn't happen. Her husband's complaining. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit of a fine art. Um, and another approach that I've seen done effectively is just to move them to squad 99. Right. So you just don't see it. Gotcha. And then you let the uh, stats person deal, deal with it. I know at our major matches, every day we review people who had no scores. We try to figure out what's happening with them. Um, and, and, and we, we, it's a big deal to delete them. And that saved us a couple of times. Like we've had people whose flights were canceled and that way we know to, to email them and say, what's going on. And they say, I'm go I'm coming. And so then we can make a plan for integrating them into the match and getting them shot through. So okay. we're really big. I, I, I can, I, in my match director life, I, I call myself the yes match director. And that if you come to me with a reasonable problem, I'm going to say yes and try and sort it out okay. um, versus the, I always default to yes versus no. And I just find that that's a happier experience for everybody. You should try that Trevor. Nope. <laughs> no, it's not, no. Say that right away. Anything. Nope. Nope. He's not a yes man. He's definitely not a yes man. <laughs> so Ken last year at some point I ended up duplicating competitors somehow and okay. I don't know how it happened. Well, um, you, all the competitors, no, no, just the, the occasional competitor. And then yeah. so um, Jim Bob was duplicated. And at the end of the match, I had scores for Jim Bob that shot some of the stages. And then the other Jim Bob had shot the other stages, but I didn't have the two Jim Bobs completely finished. Yeah. So the, 
sometimes people add them to, again, it's a distributed device. You don't know what's happening on stage eight if you're on stage one. Somebody added that shooter. They didn't find him in their squad or something. They added him. So as long as Jim Bob and Jim Bob are running the same division, you can merge them in the edit shooters and they okay. go, they could become one. And, um, you know, you just literally go in there and just do it. it I can't even describe it. It's just a button in the gym. One of the Jim Bobs, you merge the other one. Okay. Um, and that's the same thing. If you get, um, like people with weird divisions, like sometimes people type LTD or limited, um, mm-hmm. and there's a way to just merge. You just say limited equals limit LTD equals limited. And stuff. There's there's a lot of stuff in there that because uh, the odds are if you're hitting it, I'm sure I hit it four years ago, right? When I was because gotcha. we have this yeah. concept of eat our own dog food, yeah, right. So my club, bless them, they see early practice score stuff, yeah, That's <laughs> every Tuesday time. night, yeah. yeah, and they they're aware of it. They get a lot of benefit from it, but they also sometimes, you know, like the the only scores that I'm aware of ever being lost in practice score happen on the first weekend that we ran it when we didn't know that, that if you got a phone call, we lose scores. <laughs> so we were all using borrowed devices. People get yep. calls and then, Oh, the score's gone. Um, so, uh, that was the only one that I, I actually know why that it was lost and why. Very cool. Yeah. It's a, uh, very stable platform. Uh, so maybe, uh, Trevor's, Trevor's kind of alluded to some of the, the, um, things that he's run across. What are some, what are some of the most common issues that new users have on the, uh, on the, uh, practice score platform? Uh, you know, I tried to get a quick rundown on that and prep. It, it's really all over the map, but, but I would say that, you know, assuming like hit factor scoring, right. The biggest issue people have is designing the stages, right. Right. So if there's 23 targets and, or that would be a big stage. Let's say there's 23 shots. So 12 paper, and one steel. They do 13 steel. They forget, or thir- 13 paper, or two steel. They, they, they design the stage incorrectly, and then they score. Right? Yeah, in which case, it's best you know, three trouble hits. in paradise. Best three yeah, hits, they, and they don't edit the target to take three hits, or they, they forget, forget no des- shoots. Yeah, and they forget to designate a non-penalty mic. Yeah, exactly. Now, a lot of that we've gone through and done the, the, the deep thinking to figure out what we can change and what we can't change. Like adding a no shoot, you can do that essentially anytime. Um, but some stuff like the number of hits on a target, if you've already scored people, that's just, you know, that's just not solvable. Uh, you're going to have to delete the stage, edit, add the stage in, and then enter those scores by hand. That's why I really like to run, you know, literally go through and and do uh, pretend scores on, on a copy of the match, make sure everything's right. Mm-hmm. That's definitely the number one issue. I think the second issue would be the, the double shooters when people in a, in a traveling squad match where their iPads are out, um, somebody walks over to shoot through because they got to leave early to add them there and they end up twice, stuff like that. Oh, so, that's interesting because on Saturday, I actually have two people shooting through. So that's what's going to happen unless I give them their own tablet. Could I give them their own tablet or should I have you them can. or their own squad? No, they're not. They're shooting right. through. Well, you can, but you, there's a way to find shooters that are in other squads. That's easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so long as they're in the system, it's fine. Um, the problem is some people don't know that. So they just add them right then and there. We've done interface changes to make that harder. Like to say, hey, there's somebody by that name in the match already. But people are persistent, right? They're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that's that's a positive way of saying maybe something else. <laughs> um, I love your positive so, attitude there. Yeah, <laughs> people are persistent. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be a problem, and even if it does happen, then you can just merge them later. Yeah, or actually, I think uh, I misunderstood what Adriel said. Yeah, put them in their own squad. Yeah, that then, that can work too. Yeah, that's what we did for our ROs. We shoot our ROs the same days as as we shoot our competitors, so we put the ROs in their own squad, so it's easy. What squad are you in? I'm in the RO squad. Oh, okay, that's easy. Right? Yeah, and we Switch we over. usually use 99 squad mm-hmm. 99. Although for uh, like nationals where we might have more squads than that, you know, then I use 999. So, um, yeah, you know, a little bit of prior thinking on almost anything helps a lot, and I think with practice score. You know, it's kind of the measure twice, cut once. Yep. Type I'm glad. attitude. 
if we didn't have you on tonight, I would have been at a loss Saturday morning to figure out what to do with those two shoot through guys, unless <laughs> someone from a bigger club, bigger region would have had experience with it and stepped up. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad it worked out. Uh, if in, in general though, it, it, I try to design the software so that, you know, unless you shoot the tablet, you should be okay. I'm not going to say that won't happen someday, but hopefully not. <laughs> we had a club submerge a tablet in a cooler. And they forgot the cool, coolers melt. They just laid it on top, you know, in the ice, and then yep. forgot about it, and it sunk down to the bottom. It was completely submerged and dead. So, um, you know, they did lose scores because they hadn't synced prior to putting it in. Yep. Prior so to a little submerge. bit of common sense you have to do. Uh, the only one that I've actually seen destroyed uh, at our club, I have about 40, just let's just say 50 iPads, um, iPad minis, and we had somebody shut a truck door on it. Um, but our club, we have Wi-Fi, so every the minute you edit a score, not just create a score, but edit it, change it, add, fix the time, do whatever, that that gets emailed or texted to the shooter. Wow. Right. So the minute you finalize the score, their phone buzzes. Wow. Um, so we, we, we don't lose scores. And we also don't use the printers um, because an e- emailed receipt is yep. – I prefer an emailed receipt greatly over a printed one. The rule says in IPSC specifically the competitor must be given a record of their score. It doesn't say it has to be paper. Yeah, I think that's, that's a very good rule. Um, and, and in some matches that could be take a screen take, – take a photo of it. Yeah, anything. You know? whatever you got. And, yeah. uh, I'm not a fan of paper. It's not that I'm paper has rain troubles. Paper yeah. has handwriting troubles. Paper has reading troubles. Cost money. Paper has cost money. It has transcription issues. We have transportation issues. You know, I remember running matches with score runners. Yeah. I try that at a nine mile separated match. I mean, yeah. um, paper added a lot of complexity and risk for, in my opinion, zero benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're doing it only because the rule says we have to. Yeah, I think an email receipt, I mean, I do it at Home Depot or Depot. How do you say that up in Canada? Depot. Depot. Yeah, Depot. 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 Yeah, no, I think, Despot. I do, it, I do it at Lowe's. Um, oh, yeah. that's Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> we got Lowe's. Yeah, why, the why RCP not train is called Depot, <laughs> where you buy your hardware is called Depot. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Yeah. It's to me. Um, so, you know, that's, that's my view. When I, I did an analysis, I'm a bit of a numbers guy. So, you know, when I looked at the ran area matches, big ones ran national matches and almost all the stats errors were related to people coming into the, to the stat shack and with incorrectly done handwritten receipts. And, and some of those ended up in their favor when they really didn't shoot that and they were just gaming it. And, some of those we had to issue reshoots because we just really didn't know what was right. Was it the tablet or was it the paper? Um, yeah. You know, so if you're running, let's just say you do, I think we had like 24 of those the last time I actually did a paper, a large paper match. Well, 24 times three minute reshoot, right? If you add 24 people into that big loop of shooters, it's a, a matches when you unfold squads, 24 times three is an hour that we had to keep competitors on the range so we could do the ARB period, right? To just because of that one little thing. Yeah. That's yeah. not, that doesn't fit my work play ratio. No. Yeah. Right? Well, one of the other things that uh, you're, you had mentioned uh, a little bit earlier about checking scores and checking for zeros um, at, at the end of a match, I'll check for zeros as well and, and see if we have any zeros. But the other thing I'll look at is uh, are there any like, are there any ranks that are way off? Because typically yeah. like your top 10 shooters are going to get the top 10 scores on every single stage. So if you look at this like on a stage by stage basis and you see someone who's in, in like the lower third and they got like a, a first or a second or something yeah. like that on a stage, you're like, mm, that doesn't look quite right. Yeah. <laughs> what went on with that that's, guy? That's a good thing for a stats person to do. Um, you know, we have a certain checklist that we use in our matches similar to that. Um, I remember nationals four years ago, we had a C shooter win a stage. And my phone blew up, you know, with people, including the president of the, of the sport calling me, you know, just to make sure. And I actually tracked him down, watched his stage video, talked to the CRO of the stage. 
guy unleashed. He went beast mode, you know, <laughs> one time in his life. But, you know, now that guy, he's got a stage win at Nationals, completely legit. You know, he's got a dinner conversation thing. Oh, yeah, I was at Nationals, won a stage. You know, just drop that. No so, biggie. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. But, yeah, that's important to, to have a kind of a systematic thing. The Range Master reports that we talked about that have time, they also have green, red, and yeah. other codes to indicate the completeness. Yeah. You know, I, I think actually my favorite feature of practice score is when you get that warning that says, your time looks suspicious, <laughs> but it's actually correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. I feel good. Yeah. Yeah. We had that happen twice in the pre-match. Unfortunately, not to me, but uh, didn't do them any good anyway. I beat them, but whatever. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> important. No. that's better than the, your time is that normally long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be soul crushing. Also, occasionally, yeah. Um, you need a coach. <laughs> so like, the hardest hell match I run where we have a five minute uh, timeout on stages, you know, we have to set that, make sure to remember to set that or it'll just turn on all the time. You, you guys getting... have a five minute part time. You guys are, are, bless your hearts. <laughs> you guys are so <laughs> nice. <laughs> I give the people what they want. You know, yeah. the match fills up. People love challenge. Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to do it every week, um, but you know, once or twice a year, getting out there and getting your inner ranger on, you know, that's that's fun. Yeah, the, the hardest hell videos are uh, are uh, inspiration for a lot of our stages. <laughs> <laughs> All right on, good. Yeah, Ken. my son designs most of those. Yes. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead and finish. No, that's uh, cool. Okay. Um, so, what was the first? scoring um practical scoring sp practical sport that practice score was used for was it idpa or uspsa definitely uspsa okay so yeah. it started with uspsa and then it spread to idpa and ipsic and what are all the different uh, practical shooting sports that you can currently score using practice score wow there are a lot um i, I think practice scores actually or how about a number able... rather than rather than try and name them all what yeah about uh, there's got to be 35 or 40 different kinds. Wow. Amazing. Um, we have essentially a hundred percent market share in USPSA, probably 75 or 80% in IDPA. Although I, I, it's been a while since I checked that. I think it's up essentially a hundred percent multi-gun IPSC is not as, um, as broad, um, but it's growing. And, uh, for the, for the level one through threes, Mm -hmm. Right, still not approved for four and five. Although we're we're working. I think, really? Actually, no. It actually it is. It is. We we work through that at Shot Show. I forgot about that. So that awesome. that can all be done. Um, we also do NRA sports, right? So cool. you know you can go out and shoot your F class. Uh, we do shotgun. Um, right now, I've got staff uh, that have visited every NRA major match, like not, uh, Camp Perry and so forth to work with their stats people to get an understanding of how their, their game goes because for practice shooting, they had me, you know, guy out doing yep. it, yep. but um, I'm not really that involved in that sport. So, but we're committed. Basically, if you shoot and score, right. If you keep score, uh, we're probably going to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're a uh, sport, sport um, agnostic. Yeah. We think cool. It's terrific that you're running, that you're shooting and trying to get better by keeping score. That's good for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, Ken, I, th I think uh, I think we've barely scratched the surface here. I think I don't want to take any more of your time here. We're we're at uh, right around forty five minutes, but uh, oh, okay. it's been super interesting. Um, I think we got to get you back on and talk about hard as hell. Uh, maybe the tactical performance center. There's like we've only touched like a little bit of of, <laughs> of all that is uh, that's Ken Nelson. <laughs> yeah. Maybe cover the wedding. Um, <laughs> On another show. This is a gun show. I'm not, are they going to be guns? Is it a shotgun wedding? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. No, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure. And you just uh, shoot me a note. I, I forget sometimes how much I enjoy talking about this stuff. So this, was, this has been very enjoyable for me, and I look forward to doing it again. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming on, Ken. You're very welcome. Good talking with all of you. Thank you, Ken. Thanks. Once again, we'd like to thank... Ken Nelson, creator of the coolest practice uh, practical scoring app ever. It has really revolutionized the way that we play our game and the way that we manage our events. 
Mm. And I can't wait to get him back on and hear about all the other cool stuff that he does. Hard as hell. I don't know if you've seen any videos on YouTube of hard as hell, but like they've got the coolest three gun stages. Nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, how about some listener feedback? Um, Matthew, would you take the first one, please? Oh, sure. Trevor, no, you got to read the thing about uh, listener Matthew, feedback. Matthew, oh, yeah, who, who sponsors listener feedback, Matthew? Listener feedback is sponsored by Highlander Tactical. Go to highlandertactical.com to check out a great supply of both inside and outside of the waistband holsters today. Use promo code Claude. Claude? Promo Claude. Use, yep. Claude. Use promo code <laughs> Slamfire to check out. To at check out. At check. Yeah, I can't read. I told you. <laughs> I'm, I'm pulling off you tonight. Yeah, good. Yeah, at check out to save 10% off your order. Yeah, Highlander Tactical. Oh, man, sure. when you made the reading joke, that reminded me that Kelly's not here. And right. I forgot to say the reason why she wasn't here. Why isn't she here? She she got sprayed by a skunk before the oh, show, and uh, you do not to want to get sprayed by a skunk before you come on the show. Well, tomato she, bath. Get, yeah, tomato bath. Yeah, tomato yeah. bath. Oh, we're thinking yeah, about no. you, Kelly. In your skunks. tomato bath. Skunks Ooh, sending, stink. Sending man. tomato bath thoughts to you. Yes. Mm. Not thoughts of you in tomato juice. That well, now weird. there's an image. <laughs> <laughs> all right the first one from larry please from larry hey gang really enjoying the show with all the gun groping talk coming from the government recently i thought i'd share some positive experiences from this month over the past few weeks several friends and colleagues have visited our range to try out handguns most having no experience the first group of three had one gentleman who had never held a handgun he enjoyed it so much he has already signed up for a local PAL and RPAL safety course. After speaking with his wife about the experience, she asked if she could give it a try, so the couple visited the range this weekend. She had never handled a firearm of any type before, so she was very tentative in the beginning. But after some instruction, she got more comfortable, so she fired one round at a large steel target. We talked about why she missed a target and made some adjustments and repeated a few times. Within 30 minutes and 50 rounds, she was nailing a 12-inch steel target at 15 meters with a 9 mil. At one point, she hit 19 out of 20 while her husband took video. We had a nice chat when they were leaving, and I'm certain she'll be telling family and friends about an enjoyable experience at the range. The next group of three had experience with rifles, but not handguns. After emptying a few mags, they were hitting the targets regularly. One of the guys contacted me later that night. He has already signed up for his restricted PAL course in September and is willing to drive two hours each way to get it done. Both of his sons are now talking about taking the PAL safety course as well. For anyone able to find time to educate folks at the range, it's a great way to grow our numbers. Big thanks to you and your crew for what you do. From Larry. Thank you, Larry. Larry's one of our shooting buddies here in New Brunswick. We like Larry. Larry's cool. Yeah, Larry is cool. We were just talking about what we can do to help stave off these liberals mm-hmm. coming to steal our guns. Larry's got an idea. It's a great idea. Be like Larry. <laughs> yes, be like Larry. Concur. Yep. Take more people out to the range. Absolutely. Give them a positive experience. Let them know that we're not the problem and that guns aren't as scary as they think they are. People are always scared of the unknown. If they haven't shot guns before, it's an unknown. They don't know. Yep. They think it's scary. They think it's what they see on TV. Every time you see a gun on TV, someone gets shot. They think that's what happens. You see a gun, someone's getting shot. Not the case. Cool. You do you want to take the next one? From Rod R. Cartridge. Uh, this will be a little bit broken because it's cut like kind of like bullet point, but cartridge case failure example from 2010. And I will put this image on our show notes. It's a uh, big failure. <laughs> it's a what do you call it? Case occlusion. Case it's failure. Incipient head separation is one of the uh, possibilities, but maybe, yeah, yeah, it might be head separation. And it just like caused a, a, a leak at, uh, at at a point on the case head. There, it's a three hundred eight hand load. Uh, the rest were fine, leaning uh, up without signs of excessive pressure. I suspect it was a manufacturing defect in the case Winchester head stamp. I think it purchased it as new. So that would have been the first firing happened in a Savage 110. Savage design did a great job of handling the released gas. So the gas that came out of the case didn't get shot back in his face. 
Uh, extractor, detent, and spring were lodged in the magazine box. Oh, how convenient. Just reassemble it. Uh, retrieved, rifle reassembled. No subsequent issues with the rifle. I disposed of the remaining ammunition, uh, without, which was less than 10 rounds, without trying any more. So, uh, yeah, scary. A little, little <laughs> scary and interesting at the same time. How uh, how a rifle handles uh, excessive pressure or a leak from the case uh, when it happens because some rifles are great for it they leak it out out uh, specific parts that uh, aren't near your face and some of them will spray that right back in your face and that's when you're really glad that you're wearing uh, eye protection. Mm. And he's right about the savage designs though. Matthew and I were on the range one day and he was uh, helping someone sight in their <laughs> rifle. They were going moose hunting and she had. Was it an Axis, Matthew? No, it wasn't. It was a Sav. I think it was a Savage One Ten. Yeah. yeah, in seven millimeter, belted cartridge, and uh, it was all over the place. And the husband and wife were like, "She shoots better than this," and she's like, "Yeah, I shoot better than this." And Matthew took a look at the um, chamber, and he had, always carries a flashlight, so he turned the flashlight on and pointed it inside the chamber. And he's like, "Oh well, there's your problem." <laughs> One of the previous firings, the brass separated at the belt and left all of that into the chamber. And yet they were able to continue to chamber more rounds and fire the gun. And the, we, we picked up the brass. That's what we did. We picked up the brass. And we looked at the brass and we could see the, ex, the ejector mark on the case head and the extractor mark. And we're like, whoa, there's some serious pressure signs here. <laughs> yeah, so there sure was. Case stayed in there, and you were able to ram in another one. Yep. Oh, yep. that's crazy. Dude, it was I, the I weirdest wouldn't have believed thing if I've, I had seen it. Weirdest thing I'd ever seen in my life. No idea how it worked, but oh. it it was, and, and it was hard to to chamber around. Like yeah, they no were, kidding. They were smacking it in, but it would go and it would finish all the way in, and it would the, the bolt would close and they would fire. You got to imagine the pressures. The scary part was they had just had it at a local gun shop who inspected it and went, yeah, no, we can't find anything wrong with it. Yep. Took Matthew 13 and a half seconds after we picked up some brass off the range floor. Huh. So testament to how well Savage rifles are constructed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a defect in the case myself. Looking at the picture here, the way the hole is punched out, incipient head separation is usually a horizontal hole, a hole or crack, not a vertical well, you My see a line that. there, and it's suspiciously right there. Right on the line, there's like a a, a vertical cut. So, I, you know, yeah, forming, case forming, an issue in how the case was formed anyways. Yeah, yeah. Metallurgy in the brass maybe is bad. I don't know. Cool. Well, if you would like to send us an email, you can do so at slamfireradio at gmail.com. And when you do, I'll be sure to not forget to plug our sponsor, Highlander Tactical. Yeah. You make no promises. You're right. I promise nothing. That's my. That's the one thing I promise is to promise nothing. Right. Well, you know, set low expectations. And then when you, you know, get better than them, people will be happy. Exactly. Or if you don't want to do something, when you're asked to do something, um, you know, do so bad that they don't ask you to do anything else after that. Is that um, what you do with the dishes at your place? Exactly. Go ahead and wrap that up for me, Adriel. <laughs> the dishes or the iTunes reviews? Yeah, he, the he iTunes he, reviews. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you would like to review us on iTunes, check us out on iTunes or Podbean or Google Play or wherever, really wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, shoutouts, Matthew. Do you have any shoutouts? I should. Why hmm. not? Um, shout out to. Fred, I haven't seen Fred in a while. Fred, where are you, buddy? Come on, come on out to the range. That's yeah. There's my shout out to Fred. Cool. Yeah, uh, I've got one to Ch Chad, who's who's a listener of the show. He's uh, he's doing the drive to BC, and I am catching a ride. I'm officially like hiking up my pants, showing a little bit of ankle, <laughs> and like, nice. me up on the way through. <laughs> yep. Sorry about I will, that. Uh, I will provide Timmy's and uh, back rubs. Maybe back rubs. Nope, just Timmy's company and great conversation. I could use a back rub. Not nearly creepy. I got a back rub but, from you, uh, didn't I? I placed my hand on your back in a very humble way. I was talking to, I was talking to Adriel. It's not, oh. Yeah, I was talking to Adriel. <laughs> oh, oh, my, never yeah. mind. Never mind yeah. anything I just said. Cut yeah. that out. Edit that. <laughs> no. It was no, a well, joke. You weren't thing. supposed to tell anyone, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> 
Chris Chris Kingston at the range today, the range master was asking who was little spoon and who was big spoon for Matthew and I. I'm so the jetpack. I stood behind Matthew and put my <laughs> hand on his back and demonstrated that he's a little spoon. <laughs> uh, good times. Good times. <laughs> yep. So um, yeah. yeah, so I got some shout outs. Uh, are you are you guys done? Can I go? Yeah, I was, go. I, I was on you're, you're Sorry, the host, host, uh, you know, you can choose to Okay. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. So to everyone who came <laughs> to everyone who came to the ninth annual or the eighth annual podcart charity shoot, thank you so much. To all the guys from all the other shows, Canadian Patriot Podcast was well represented. Um the International Liberty of Death podcast was represented. Um New Shooter Canada was represented. George Hatch, the man himself, was here with his wife. Uh, Mike Hisson and Sarah and the baby. There was just so many cool people, listeners and podcasters that came and they make a heck of a long trip. Andrew Vincent set up a booth. I didn't know that was a thing that was happening, oh, uh, sweet. but he brought all, he brought a truckload of product down. That was cool. Apparently I had a vendors area. I didn't know about, but it worked out. It was good more or less. Um, so thank you for, for taking all that stuff down. To all the sponsors who flooded the prize table with amazing products and prizes, thank you so much. That helped contribute to the $7,000. Um, and to everyone who helped build SummerSlam, I got a lot of help on the range to build stages this year. You guys are awesome. And to the crew that rebuilt the house, we actually have a two-story platform. We call it the house stage. Um, so to Alain, Pat, Stefan, Muffin, the other boys who gave him a hand, who I'm probably forgetting. I, I, that's why I don't like to name names because I always forget somebody, but you know who you were if you were out there helping. Thank you so much. I went away for a whole month, and I came back, and everything was ready to go. So as a match Wait. director, it may it helps me sleep at night knowing that those guys did above and beyond to help make this one another successful match. Has even, hasn't happened yet, but I don't want to jinx it, but I'm pretty confident it's going to be another successful SummerSlam. So, and finally, to everyone who's coming to SummerSlam, see you Friday night in Charlo at the registration night. Sweet. Not to take any thunder, but uh, I'm going to destroy your uh, your seven thousand uh, dollar raising amount there for charity. If, if yes, I if I didn't want you to, I wouldn't have asked you to host. If you don't destroy it, oh boy, you'll be a sh- like cone of shame, laughing stock. <laughs> yeah. Cone of shame, yes, cone definitely. Shame. Yep, six thousand eight hundred. It's like go home, never come back here again. <laughs> yeah, it's right off the show. <laughs> Yeah, no, I want you to crush it. I want you to humiliate that $7,000. I want you to, like, laugh at the children that are eating breakfast. Like, <laughs> you guys, you guys could be eating filet mignon if you yeah. were in Edmonton. <laughs> Enjoy your Pop-Tarts, Maritime children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, oh, yeah, we'll be doing a check presentation with the principal of the gun club meeting. Awesome. In, in the fall, yeah. Or actually, I think uh, next week, actually. Anyway, more on that later. Uh, Patreonies, do we have any new Patreonies? We're at like 89. So to all of you who we, we know we owe you a Patreon episode, uh, maybe we'll do like two or something. It's just been so busy. We're all traveling this time of year with stuff, charity shoots and matches and nationals and maple seeds every other weekend. So summer. Should I do one on the road? road? Should I do one from the BC? Yes, of course next? you can. Yes, absolutely. Create some Patreon um, bonus content. That'd be awesome. All right. So, um, so if you're a Patreoni, you get bonus content just for you. You get some swag and other specials that come up from time to time. We actually had a promo code for the Calgary Shooting Center once that was uh, just for Patreoni. So, you know, you get some extra content, you get some swag, but you also get to help keep this show afloat and make it possible for us to attend events and, you know, report back to you on those events and, and create content for the show that for some reason you seem to love so much. Um, and we thank you for having low standards. You can, <laughs> you can, you can become a Patreon by going to www.patreon.com forward slash slam fire radio until next week, join one or more of our national firearms associations, such as the CCFR check out, check us out on gun owners of Canada and likes on Facebook. We're all the way up to 1,937 that's a lot of likes. We are feeling the love. So, yeah, take somebody shooting. Don't do what Larry did. Be like Larry. Be like Larry. Be like Larry. Be like Larry. See you next week, everybody. 
Bye. Later. So if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun. Hello. Oh. <laughs> I jumped the start signal. You jumped it. <laughs> <laughs>